Hello, and welcome to What's New on the Designer Drug Scene, Synthetic Cannabinoids, Precursors, and More. My name is Holly Brzezinski, and I am the manager of our Forensic Novel Psychoactive Substance Research Department within the Forensic Division at Cayman Chemical. Cayman Chemical is located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We are an ISO-accredited analytical reference standard provider and have an extensive catalog of research standards. Our forensic division is a team of talented scientists dedicated to making research possible for our colleagues in forensics and toxicology. My area of focus is identifying and researching new, so new novel psychoactive substances. I have been the leader of our GC MassPEC Unknown program for the last six years, helping the forensic community identify new substances within their casework. Cayman has several resources available at your disposal to help with identification, including our free Cayman Spectral Library, which is updated with new compounds quarterly, as well as our GC MassPEC drug identification tool on our website. And if you can't find your unknown using our identification tool, you can submit your GC MassPEC data, usually in PDF or JPEG forms, and any relevant information to myself or our tech support department. Today, I will be discussing the latest synthetic cannabinoids, benzodiazepines, and fentanyls, as well as the emergence of their precursors. So after the class-wide ban on synthetic cannabinoids in China, we have now begun to see these do-it-yourself kits in which the compounds are semi-finished. They are providing the precursor, which is usually one step behind, which I'll show you on the next slide so the user can finish synthesizing the product themselves to get around regulations. Many of these do-it-yourself semi-finished kits are being offered on illicit directory user sites. Uh, here are some examples. They are also being discussed on Reddit, Google Groups, and even SoundCloud, like I have an example here. They're even offering lab equipment to help the end user finish the synthesis. So taking a look at how synthetic cannabinoids are synthesized, and this is generalized, keep in mind, there are a couple different pathways. If you start off with route A, you can purchase either the indole or indazole carboxylic acid, and when reacted with the appropriate amine, such as in this case, l leucine you will obtain the following precursor, whether that is the indole or indazole version. So route A will give you the headpiece precursor. But if you follow route B, using the same indole or indazole carboxylic acid, and you attach the tailpiece, in which I have some examples of tailpieces on the right here. This will give you a different precursor uh, that has this tailpiece. So route B will give you the tailpiece precursor. Both routes, though, will lead you to the final product. All you have to do is either add the tailpiece or the headpiece to get the final um, synthetic cannabinoid. So looking at some Route A indole precursors, here are some that you may encounter. For instance, 1' prime nephoil indole will lead you to several synthetic cannabinoids such as the traditional JWH18. This precursor will help you get to JWH203 and was recently identified in do-it-yourself kits in the Russian Federation. This precursor here will help you get to the traditional synthetic cannabinoids such as UR144 and XLR11. Looking at some of the bottom indole precursors, MDMB ICA was just identified last year. Uh, the CFSRE just released a monograph on this and it was identified with samples also containing MDMB PICA, which I will discuss later. Continuing route A precursors, these are the indazoles that you may encounter, ADB5-bromoanaka and MDMB5-bromoanaka started to appear on the market in 2021. ADB-anaka started to appear on the market in 2022 and can be used to make adb boot naka MDMB-anaka recently started to appear in June of 2023 and can be used to make mdmb boot naka mdmb pinaka and mdmb 4 in pinaka and the most recent precursor, which was identified in Q4 of 2023, which up to this point we had not seen 
a methyl group in this five position here. We had only seen bromines was MDMB 5 methyl anaka. All of the precursors that I have just mentioned, the CFSRE has monographs for. Now switching gears, if Route B was used, you may see some of the following carboxylic acid precursors in your samples. Keep in mind, these can also be found as metabolites in toxicology samples. So here are several possible Route B precursors. While we are seeing an uptake of precursors of regulated synthetic cannabinoids, there are still other cores emerging as well. So now I'd like to discuss a specific GCM aspect unknown of a new synthetic cannabinoid. So in Q3, Q4 of 2022, we had received three spectra similar to this one with a base peak of 226 from Turkey, Kentucky, and Florida. In addition, the CFS3 also reached out to us and we started to collaborate on discovering what this new substance could be. In Q1 of 2023, we received an additional GCMS spec data from Ohio, Louisiana, and Texas. So around April of last year, I just so happened to be looking into these type of synthetic cannabinoids in which we have two floral QMPSB standard and looking at this drug testing and analysis paper. So here are some examples of the EI mass spec of these synthetic cannabinoids within the paper. And I thought to myself, why does this look familiar? So note, this synthetic, these synthetic cannabinoids have a quinoline group here with a nitrogen, and this will be important later. If you look at the bottom spectra here, QMIPSB, and we focus in on this region right here, I'm gonna blow this up. You notice there is 89, 117, 135, 152, and 183. And then if we compare it to our unknown from the previous slide, we also have 89, but instead of 117, we have 115, 118, and then we still have the 135, 152, and 183. So after going through the paper and looking at the fragments, we had an idea for the fragments for 89, 118, 135, and 183. If you're curious about how 135 is derived, this paper shows this pretty neat net mechanism as an explanation. The quinoline group is eliminated, leading to an oxyrene formation, which leads to the ring opening to rearrange to form the diketone. So then I remembered that one nephilenol was found in one of the samples. So instead of a quinoline group, like most of the compounds in the paper, I suspected a nephilene group instead which would make sense with this fragment at 115, which the nephilene group breaks down into. So now we have this much of the molecule, and we needed to figure out what would come off the sulfur group to give a molecular weight of 369, and we suspected a dimethylamine. And this also makes sense because then you get this fragment for 226. So the next step was, what do we call this? Using how the paper and literature named QMIPSB, which you see here, we use the same arrangement for naming for NNDMSB, and thank you to Rob Shulkin for his assistance. So the Q stood for the quinoline, the M for this 4-methyl, IP for the isopropyl, S for the sulfamoyl, and benzoate uh, here. Similarly done for the NMDMSB, N for the snaphaline, M for the 4-methyl, DM for the dimethyl sulfamyl benzoate. So the synthesis of the standard was initiated and the standard became available on the website in June of 2023. So we were able to run the DC mass spec right away. And as you can see, this is a close match. Our collaboration with the CFSRE led to this positive identification of this compound, and their monograph was released in November of 2023. Here are the latest synthetic cannabinoids to keep on your radar. MDMB pica was first detected in 2023. We received unknowns in August and October from Pennsylvania, and the CFSRE released their monograph in November. 
CHO, 4 prime methyl, 5 prime bromo fluoxaprone, also known as 6TP, was first detected in 2022. We received an unknown from Kentucky. There was also, this was also found on director user websites for sale. The European Project Response released their monograph in February of 2023. And after collaborating with the CFSRE on the naming of this compound, thank you to Alex Kortolsky, Donna Ayula, and Rob Shulkin, the CFSRE released their monograph in June of 2023. Another synthetic cannabinoid to keep on your radar is MDMB 5 prime bromo 4 in Panaca. We had a potential unknown of this from Florida in June of 2023, and also this new different structure um, synthetic cannabinoid A Pananza, uh, which was reported by Sweden and seized by Bulgarian Customs. So what's new with benzodiazepines? Well, it seems that bromazolam is the most prevalent benzodiazepine currently taking off. Several new benzodiazepines and their prodrugs have been popping up recently within the last six months or so on Reddit and illicit chemical websites that you should keep your eye out for. An example is pertazinil, which is being discussed on Reddit and found for sale on illicit chemical websites like you see here. Then we are seeing several prodrugs, such as lomazophone, which is discussed in this Journal of Analytical Tax Paper, and other prodrugs such as ethazophone, or what we are calling desmethyl clodazopam uncyclized intermediate, as well as clonazophone and diclazophone, or dilorazepam uncyclized intermediate, just to name a few. We should also have the norazophone standard coming soon as well. The idea is these prodrugs will be converted to the corresponding benzodiazepine when consumed. For instance, romazophone will convert to romazolam. Some of these prodrugs are simple, uncyclized versions of a corresponding benzodiazepine, while others have an amino acid attached to the primary amine. In both cases, the acid in the stomach will either cyclize or cleave the peptide, then cyclize to form the desired product. While we haven't seen many new fentanyls on the market, we have been, we have been seeing synthetic precursors and byproducts. We've observed these Bach protected for enolidopiperdines, along with their fluoro and methyl counterparts, as well as the Bach protected norfentanyl and parafluoronorfentanyl uh, recently. When looking at the synthesis, the Bach protected piperdone undergoes a reductive amination with the corresponding aniline to form the Bach protected anilinyl piperdines in this first step. The Bach prevents the piperdine nitrogen from reacting with itself. So keep an eye out for these Bach protected fentanyl precursors. Some other fentanyls to keep an eye out for are byproducts from the synthesis, for instance, and propionyl parafluoronorfentanyl. When looking at one possible synthesis route, if you, were, if you start with this starting material and your intent is to create the norfentanyl to eventually produce your final product, the addition of propionyl chloride step uh, if you don't have a Bach group like Bach or benzyl to protect this uh, piperidine nitrogen, you may get double addition, and this will give you n propionyl norfentanyl or its fluoro analog. Some other byproducts you may see are n phenethyl and phenyl propanamide from this analytical chemistry paper here. This is a byproduct seen produced by the Valdez method. And you also may see ethyl for APP. Similar to phenethyl for APP, we've had several unknowns of this from Ohio, New York, New Jersey, and Florida. So thank you. If you need help identifying any new unknowns, you can directly contact me at my email here at hprasinski.com or our tech support department at techserve at caymancan.com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn, and uh, we thank you today.